Hey, it's Joey Thurman. I'm excited to bring you season two of the Fad or Future podcast. We live in a world where information is everywhere, easy to access, and sometimes not always accurate, especially in the health and wellness space, which is exactly why I created this show. There's two sides to every story, and I'm here to present both and let you decide, is it a fad or is it the future? Health fads come and go, but the science behind them is what makes them work or fail. I'm bringing the experts to you and putting the facts on the table so you can decide how and where to put your efforts in your own personal health and wellness journey. What's going on? It's Joey Thurman. Here's another episode of the Fad or Future podcast. Human milk oligosaccharides. What in the hell am I talking about? Do you need to go find a pregnant woman and get her milk? I don't know. It might be frowned upon nowadays. I think when my wife was breastfeeding, maybe I should have stockpiled some of her milk because I have Bo Berman in front of me and I know he's laughing right now because that's probably the best intro to a podcast he's ever had. (laughs) (laughs) And His his company uh, has come out with a product line of human milk oligosaccharides and we'll get into that more. And why in the hell would you want to take it? Is Is this a fad or is this the future? No, don't go out and try to get a bunch of human breast milk unless you know that individual. Bo, man, thanks for coming on. Yeah. Hey, Joey. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, that is the best podcast intro of all time. Very, <laughs> very, very good stuff there. Um, don't, you know, don't, go, don't go suck on some random woman's teat. <laughs> no, do not do not do that. And uh, <laughs> that's that's the problem we're, we're solving here at uh, Layer Origin Nutrition. No, I mean, you know, it is funny because when, when you're, you know, uh, trafficking as, as it were in uh, a product called human milk oligosaccharides, you know, you do get some funny looks, you know, mm-hmm. you, you do get people wondering, uh, you know, what the hell are you guys talking about? But, um, you know, it, uh, it is something that, that we think is going to be the future. Mm. So, I mean, let's talk a, lo- a little bit about Layer and your background with it until we specifically get into why people won't be going and sucking teats. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how many times I can say that. I think I got it out. It might be out of my system. It's probably gonna come out one or two more times. All right. Uh, so let's talk about a little bit about your background uh, and how you got involved with Layer and what the company stands for. Yeah, absolutely. So um, yeah, we are uh, Layer Origin Nutrition. Um, the It's kind of a weird name, I'll admit. Um, it's actually named after Dr. Peter Layer, who mm-hmm. uh, worked at the Mayo Clinic in the 1980s and uh, did a lot of foundational research at that time. And so my partners, there's three of us um, total, and uh, they're very impressed by Dr. Layer's research. And as a tribute, you know, sort of wanted to uh, incorporate his name into the title of the company. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, Layer Origin Nutrition. So they, uh, my partners are two food scientists is their background. Uh, one also has a degree in, in nutrition, a master's in nutrition. Um, they both have their PhD in food science though. And so they met at uh, here in Ithaca, New York, where we're still based at Cornell University in 2017. Um, in a lab that they ended up in, you know, randomly together as one being a postdoctoral fellow and one, you know, finishing up his PhD. And uh, they began talking and they were both uh, originally, you know, both born in China. And they had a little bit of rapport, I guess, in that sense. And, um, you know, they were studying a lot of the same concepts and basically partnered up and felt like, you know, one was dealing with basically pre pre diabetes, and felt like, um, you know, there's got to be a better way to to do things. Um, he also heard about um, human milk oligosaccharides for the first time, you know, again, back in 2017, before people were really talking about them very much um, in any respect, you know, as being for adults. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, so they launched the company then. Um, it wasn't public facing at that point, you know, basically uh, patents, trademarks, uh, logos, you know, all that good stuff. And then I joined more recently in uh, early 2020. Um, and my background is in television news and marketing. So I was a TV news reporter for 11 years in three different states for three different um, affiliates, hmm. and um, and then also did some marketing work uh, before joining before joining uh, Layer Origin. That's an interesting transition for you from uh, not for the marketing uh, you know as part of it, but essentially you know, going from TV into dealing with supplements and things from uh, television. But so Dr. Layer has nothing to do with the company whatsoever, just kind of a tribute. 
just kind of, just kind of a tribute. Yeah, that's, uh, so, so basically, basically the tie in there is, uh, his research looked a lot at, uh, carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. Um, and so basically one of the first products, I mean, we have, you know, we're not just HMOs or human mm -hmm. milk oligosaccharides. We also have, you know, cholesterol products, um, and, uh, blood sugar. And so the foundational ingredient of our blood sugar, uh, and also carbohydrate product is uh is from beans and mm -hmm. so you know they were very uh impressed and wanted to you know put a tribute to uh dr layer's research in, oh. in that uh area is this from white kidney beans yes, yes. yeah so yeah they were i was to take a product years ago i think it was from white kidney beans and you took uh pre uh having a high carbohydrate meal and supposed to lower the insulin response uh of that and you guys are are just technically a supplement company so you, this is this is not something where you need a prescription for correct yeah that's 100 correct right so these guys uh are my partners eschewed um you know prescription drugs and you know i mean that's kind of a common line you hear supplement companies say but it's true in this case and you know they wanted to figure out ways to try to help people that were you know and again it's it's a little trite but you know we're natural and a better way but you know they, what we try to do is have products that I mean, I know you said you've heard of the white kidney bean. That's been around for a while, but you know, we uh, have a little bit of a different spin on it, and that's kind of what we try to do with everything we put out. And really, it's what positioned us to really benefit um, over the summer whenever HMOs were mentioned on another popular podcast, and we were just kind of the right place, right time, mm -hmm. um, and and really benefited from that mention. Yeah. So let's get into it. what are HMOs and why should people be concerned about taking them? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, some people hear HMO, uh, you know, the first time I ever heard it, I, I thought it was like the, the health plan, you know, that you hear about from the 90s. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a, HMO is not great unless you get in a good network. I mean, you try to go for that PPO. <laughs> you know, PPO, uh, HSA. But uh, no, in this case, you know, again, um, human milk, oligosaccharide, um, and indigestible sugar, found in breast milk. Um, I believe it's the third largest solid found in breast milk. Mm. And yeah, so these have been around actually for quite a long time. Um, they've been researched for at least 100 years, um, even though most of us, you know, have not uh, do not have a, a big familiarity with them. And the importance is simply I mean, look, you know, anytime you you're um, you're in a business, I mean, you, you want to talk about the, the benefits, uh, not just the, you know, the aspects of it. And so the benefit is that it has had remarkable um, efficacy in dealing with gut health issues. You know, and there's a lot of people out there dealing with IBS or, uh, you know, SIBO or these different gut health issues, constipation, you know, you name it. And um, that's, that's really the big thing with HMOs is that they're you know, I don't, I never want to use the word cure. I mean, I, right. I really hate that, but you know, they can assist and aid, uh, the symptoms, you know, dealing with mm. the symptoms of that. Um, there's also an immune, there's also a proven immune health benefit as well. Um, obviously that's something that you're not going to tangibly feel as right. much. Um, but, uh, and some people may not even, you know, I know you and I, before the podcast had talked a little bit about, obviously you, you know, guinea pig with uh, our product to, to yeah, try it out for, uh, I mean, probably three or four weeks now, maybe a little bit longer. Yeah, I've been taking it every single day and generally with uh, maybe a Greek yogurt or uh, a protein shake or something. It's kind of the easiest and it's, it's tiny. I mean, this is like that your fingertip serving size was so not this massive scoop. Yeah. Yeah. And so I know originally when you had taken it for a few days, you, you were kind of curious as to what you should be feeling. Right. Um, and, you know, for some people, they may not feel a huge difference right away. It's sort of like if you supplement with probiotics, you may not feel, you know, uh, vastly different. But um, we like I told you, you know, we have had very positive feedback from people who, um, you know, real users who post reviews and whatnot and say that it's it's been very life changing for them. So yeah, HMOs, uh, we think they're we think they're the future um, because of the gut health and immune system uh, implications and mm -hmm. because of the body of research behind them. So yeah, I mean, that makes sense. So I mean, there's a plethora of research on breastfed babies and cognition and gut bacteria, and even IQ, you know, um, we my wife, breastfed our child for it's like a year and a half or so. I know some countries are do two, three years old, just one, it's cheap, it's free. Um, two, I mean, it, it really helps with that. Um, and there's 
you know, a, a bunch of studies on that. So that's what that was one thing we tried to make sure that, you know, our son could be breastfed as much as possible. But how similar is this to actual breast milk if, if you look at it? Right. So it's, it's similar to probably the most important component of breast milk, uh, just to be clear. So, mm -hmm. you know, in breast milk, first of all, it varies, you know, depending on the human being, you know, there's, mm -hmm. there's actually a pretty wide variation of the amounts of, of each component in breast milk. But in general, generally speaking, um, you're looking at lactose, lipids, HMOs, which is human milk, oligosaccharides, mm -hmm. saccharides, and proteins being in breast milk. Um, lactose, 70 grams per liter, um, lipids, 40 grams per liter, HMOs between five and 15 grams per liter, and then proteins at eight grams per liter in a liter of breast milk. Um, now, then if we drill down into that within HMOs, there's between 130 to 200 different very specific types of HMOs that have been identified. Mm -hmm. However, there's only about 15, it's kind of like the 80-20 principle, where about 15 of those make up 80% of the content that you're talking about in, you know, most breast milk. So then our product has one of those of say the 130 types of HMOs. Our product contains uh, for short, it's two FL, two apostrophe dash FL, which stands for two fucosalactose. And mm. so I will answer your question. You said, how close okay. is it to? That's what we're going to, that's what we're going to name our son, two fucos phylactose, but we, but, but we, went, like, with, uh, we went with Frederick instead. <laughs> it's like Elon Musk's. Uh, <laughs> yeah. A hyphen slash six, six, whatever. <laughs> right. I wish I knew how to pronounce that. Yeah. I, I um, have no idea. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So basically um, our, our two fucosalactose, the HMO in our product, pure HMO is 98% pure. Mm. So the other 2% it would be the question, you know, what, what the hell is that? The other 2% is basically trace, trace amounts of lactose, um, some other HMOs, but just trace amounts, you know, you might, so, you know, these have very complicated names, you know, it's like acronyms and, you know, it's two FL is the one that we have, but there's mm -hmm. also three FL, there's six SL, LNFP-3, you know, I can keep going. I mean, there's sure. 130 of them. But um, so there might be trace other HMOs, there could be trace protein, you know, trace um, lactose, but basically it's 98% pure, it qualifies as being bio identical. Mm, okay. So uh, what's the absorption rate of that? So there's a lot of, you know, supplements and things that people take and basically you could, you, half of it, you could basically be excreting from your body. Are you, are you, are you absorbing 90%, 100%? What's the absorption rate of this? I don't know the absorption rate. I've, that's yeah. a great question. I've actually never been asked that before. I could probably get a pretty quick answer from our chief scientist, yeah. my partner, Jason. Um, but I've actually never been asked that before. And that's a great question, right? Because yeah. you, you know, you don't want to buy a, a whey protein that you're just right. excreting all of it or sweating it out or whatever, <laughs> right? you know, isolate is, is better. Yeah. So what I can tell you to try to answer that question, though, the best I can, is that basically the way you know, so again, I mentioned that HMOs were researched for, you know, at least 100 years. And the idea was, okay, you know, a lot of research was done on infants, it became very clear that they were foundational in building the infant gut lining, the infant immune system, even brain development from scratch. And it was this particular component in breast milk that was doing the heavy lifting in that that encoding or, you know, building of the infant system. So the idea was, okay, you know, can this benefit adults? You know, that was a big multi-million dollar, maybe billion dollar question. Yeah. Um, we know adults like to supplement and, and do anything that can help their health. You know, um, it, it's, it's funny. I, I saw a meme the other day and I'll, I'll let you finish it, but yeah, yeah, it was, um, it was, it was like a meme of a guy, I'm going to butcher it, but a guy gets up in the morning. He's like, do you remember the last time when you got up and you just felt good and you didn't need to take a bunch of pills and pop this and you could just start your day just feeling great. But I mean, that that's what we do, right? I mean, because I, I look at my son and he's, he'll be three coming up in uh, February here. So very soon. And the kid just gets up, he'll fall, he'll backflip. He'll, he'll just kind of shake it off. I'm like, man, if you did that, like I'd break a bone, whatever. And he just, he just goes and he's got all this sort of energy. I mean, and, and you can look at all sorts of you know, different cellular structures or why he's got more energy and why he's less rigid than we are. But it's really, it's really interesting because as adults, we, you know, years and years ago, maybe we didn't need to supplement when the food was better. But I used to say when I first started in the fitness and nutrition industry, 15, 16 years ago, like, oh, you know, supplements are too supplement 
a you know good diet that you should have but now I truly believe that supplementation is necessary because the lack of nutrition that we have and the overproduction of all these sorts of foods that just don't have an, enough nutrition. And then maybe have like, I mean, pesticides and all this sort of crap and fumes and living in the cities that are messing with our gut lining. So I know I just went off on a tangent there, but I just kind of wanted to get, get that noted because it, it just really just triggered that response. Like adults, we like taking supplements and there is nothing wrong with taking that whatsoever, as long as you're taking the right things. And that's why I like having the opportunity to have, you know, products such as your own, they can come on and be like, Hey, this is, this is why it makes sense. And this is why you should take it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a great point. I mean, I do think there's a little bit of supplement shame in parts of the country, Yeah. Um, you know, where it's, it's, you know, you say the word supplement and it's viewed as something that like bodybuilders take, <laughs> that's, you know, very dangerous or something like that. Um, you know, and look, I mean, it depends what you take. I mean, I, I, I don't, mm -hmm. You know, I haven't done a lot of research into like Kratom or, you know, Kratom or, you know, I mean, there's, there's certain things that like, I kind of question whether they're, they're great for you, but, right. um, you know, you have to do your research. It's like anything. And, and right. it's like the information we digest as well. We should, we should do our own research. And, yeah. um, but yeah, no, it's a great point, uh, about supplementation and, and sometimes it is necessary. I mean, if you, if you have a deficiency, so yeah, no, what I was just getting at is that basically a lot of research went into this and the question became, can this be helpful? Can it be beneficial in the same way it's beneficial for infants? That was mm -hmm. proven, but then it became, what about for adults? Right. So there's still a lot less research on how much it helps adults. Um, there's a plethora of, of research on how much it helps uh, infants, you know, the actual HMOs in breast milk. But anyway, what I'm getting to is that it was in 2016 that the major formula makers across the world uh, started putting HMOs into their baby formula. So for anyone listening, you know, the next time you go to the grocery store, um, you know, whether it's uh, Wegmans, if you're in New York or, you know, Publix down in Florida, what have you, I don't know right. what there is in Chicago. It, uh, it, ba ba basically, if you're going to get, I mean, there's a lot of crap infant formulas. I mean, we, we had to give her a uh, son a formula for like a week or some sort of um, I can't remember what he had. We, we, it was a little jaundice in the beginning. So we had, we had to give him that to try to get things going. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of crap infant formula. So the ones we did get were from whole foods and stuff. And yeah, we did look at that. And I, uh, I remember specifically, I mean, my wife did all her research and she's like, well, there's a good formula from Germany and whatever. So she, I mean, she's got a master's in science. So she really looked uh, a lot into this, but yeah, if you look, if you get infant formulas, like the one that's probably given to your kid in the hospital is probably not the one that you, if you're going to give your kid a formula, uh, do your research on that as, as a side note. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so in any case, the you know, there is a lot of filler in there and, and some not so great things, but um, in the, in the race or the effort to try mm -hmm. to match the benefits of, of real authentic breast milk formula makers began putting HMOs into infant formula. And that was the first time, to my knowledge is that HMOs appeared in a consumer product good and basically scientifically researchers figured out how to essentially replicate them, come up with a bioidentical match mm -hmm. to it. And so they take, you know, crystallized high purity, extremely high purity, crystallized lactose. It's then fermented uh, in a process similar to the fermentation that like wine, you know, that occurs with grapes and wine where it's being fermented by bacteria or yeast once that process is over, it gets purified again, removes allergens, proteins, and that's how you arrive at that 98% purity. Mm. So it's essentially, I just talked to our chief scientist today because I wanted to be sure that I was right on this. And basically he's saying that that lactose, it does originate from, you know, bovine, from a cow. Yeah. Um, it's often, sometimes actually we're getting that high purity crystallized lactose from the cheese or whey industry is where, mm. you know, we get the starting product from, um, and it is isolate. So, you know, my assumption is that it is pretty well absorbed, right? Especially based on the feedback we're hearing, but I, I can't give you a percentage on that. Yeah. I mean, it, it just knowing what I know on nutrition, it, if it's an isolate and you know, it, it's got that efficacy rate, right? I mean, it's probably gonna be 90% or above, especially, you know, the, the small, I mean, it's a tiny, tiny amount um, of your specific product. So, I mean, who have you found? I know you talked about people that kind of have some gut health issues and things. Should everybody be taking your product and your supplement company? So you probably say yes. But I mean, is there people that you think like just if they've got a clean diet, they don't have any gut health issues? Is is this for everyone? Is this for a specific type of individual? Can you? I know there's multiple questions I'm asking at once. Can you take it 
for a week on end and feel better? I mean, it, or is it something you take for the rest of your life? Yeah, I think that's a fantastic question and something that, you know, should be asked probably of many supplements. Um, I mean, I think we'd prefer that people don't take the product. I mean, I think we'd prefer that they eat a diet steady, you know, that's a consistent diet full of prebiotic foods, mm -hmm. um, probiotic foods. And, you know, that's preferable, frankly, um, you know, and, and just living a healthy lifestyle. Um, I think, you know, the biggest indicator of whether you should take this is if you have gut health issues, if you are dealing with constipation, bloating, gas constantly, um, and you've searched for other solutions. I had a former coworker who took uh, who had IBS so bad that he took this uh, prescription drug from his doctor that actually suppressed his immune system ah. and, you know, had a risk of cancer. But I mean, he was just miserable if he didn't mm -hmm. take it. And he was really in a catch 22. Someone like that, you know, I think uh, should try HMOs. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, there, there's not uh, a downside to them. I mean, I think it's worth experimenting with them and seeing if it works for you, for your body. Um, you know, as to the question of whether, they will, you know, if you take them for a week, or you need to take them for a year or five years, I think it's like a lot of things. I mean, you might feel um, some people, especially if you're experiencing bad, you know, negative symptoms right now, from from a gut health standpoint, you may feel a pretty instantaneous difference within a few days. We had that with um, somebody who sampled the product, Travis Birch, um, who's an integrative health coach out of Kentucky. Mm -hmm which I was surprised when he emailed back saying, yeah, I noticed a difference within three days. Yeah. Um, other people don't notice a difference at all. Right. And, you know, that's okay. I mean, we don't claim that it's going to, you know, instantly change lives. Um, we hope that it, you know, makes people feel better. So what I would say is, you know, it's similar to like maybe whey protein, actually, since we were talking about it, you know, if you supplement with whey and you're doing strength training, you know, and you take it for a month, you might see some results. I think if you stop taking it, you, you might lose those mm -hmm. results or, sure. you know, they may not, might not stick with you as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, you can see some results in the short term. I would recommend taking it for the long term. Um, basically every single, and so this is the final part of the answer to the question, mm -hmm. basically every single uh, HMO in these like top 15 or the top 10 HMOs out of the 130, 130 that I mentioned has a different different level of how much re how much research has gone into the particular benefit. And so what I mean by that is like 2FL, the one that's in our product, yep. um, has extensive, extensive clinical scientific research into its benefit for gut health. It has a little bit less for immune health, but still a healthy amount or still a good amount. Mm -hmm. um, and then even less so for brain development. But, you know, 6SL has different levels. So for brain development, it's much more proven, you know, in the studies that have been conducted, whereas for gut health, it's a little lower. Mm. So um, I've kind of now confused myself on what I was <laughs> the point I was trying to make. But that happens. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, it just depends, honestly, on and, and so there are, you know, we have competitors, I mean, you know, we won't, we're not, we have nothing to hide. I mean, there's other HMO companies out there that are bringing them on the market for adults. Mm -hmm. I think we're one of only four or five in, in the entire world right now. And maybe the only one in the United States who has a product, uh, you know, that's HMOs directly, uh, specifically for adults. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the other companies have different HMOs in their formulations. You know, they, some of them have uh, LNNT, 6SL, 3FL. Um, you know, we are firm believers in 2FL, but we will be um, introducing some other products in, in 2021 as well. Okay. So you talked about cognitive uh, benefits to it. I mean, is, is this research that's from children who are, who are actually, you know, getting the HMOs from breast milk, or is this done on adults and they actually notice tangible cognitive differences? To my knowledge, 99% of the research proving the cognitive benefit is done in infants and in children. Okay. Um, the wealth of the research on adults is pointing towards benefits in for, for gut health and immune mm -hmm. uh, benefit. Now, you know, I guess in terms of, you know, mentioning cognitive benefit, we do that. We feel comfortable doing that because there is some research that, you know, that's been done on adults in that area. Mm -hmm. It's just less, um, what's the word? It's, it's like less proven in that yeah. sense. Um, and then also if you, you know, if you're seeing the benefits of, you know, gut and immune health, and it works in, you know, infants and adults sure. in the brain, you know, function works for children. We're thinking it translates to adults, but, you know, we're pretty forthright in, in saying that, you know, it's less proven in terms of the cognitive um, area. 
Right. And, and you may get some reciprocal benefits. I mean, if you're, if you're healing your gut, generally you're going to help that, you know, gut brain access anyways, and you're going to feel better. And, you know, we know our, our immune system, you know, uh, is predominantly in our gut anyway. So it's going to make sense that it, it would, if it's going to help with your gut, it's probably going to help with your brain there. All right. So yeah, I've been taking this for it's like uh, several, uh, several weeks and, you know, for somebody like me, you mentioned that I, I may not notice um, a specific uh, difference. Is there anything um, else that you that is pointing to that the HMOs could help with that you guys are getting excited about? Or is this the main focus, you know, the, the brain and, and the gut and the immune system? It's, it's honestly just that trio of benefits. Yeah, there, there's no other research right now that, you know, indicates any other um, benefits. I think, you know, what you just alluded to is so true, which is that, you know, we know now that, you know, there is the gut brain access and access rather, right. um, and the, uh, the vagus nerve and, and, you know, so that tie in there is big. And so, you know, if you can improve your gut health on a wholesale level, then you may see side benefits mm -hmm. that could be very wide ranging. Um, you know, we're not going to go ahead, go out and claim those, sure. you know, that you're going to see weight loss, it'll boost your IQ, you know, um, not at all. But, uh, but, you know, would we be surprised if people saw some ancillary benefits? No. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you look at, you know, creatine, which is probably the world's most studied supplement back in the day yeah. when it was, uh, it was Barry Bonds and um, uh, <laughs> Mark, Mark McGuire, right? Uh, Carl, yeah. I, was, I, yeah. I was growing up in St. Louis at the time. So, they were also taking other additional supplementation besides creatine, but I came out of creatine like, Oh, they're taking creatine and doing all this sort of stuff. But now creatine has tremendous results for Alzheimer's and cognitive decline. And, you know, they weren't checking that. that. Yeah. There, there's a bunch of uh, research now on how it's just really good just to take creatine, whether you're working out or not. Um, it's, it's really, yeah, look that up. Uh, creatine is, um, is one of the, I mean, Actually, I've got, uh, so I have Dr. Ben Lynch on who owns uh, Seeking Health and he's got um, uh, electrolytes and he puts creatine in his electrolytes and I think taurine for the absorption rate too. But um, like he was talking about that and that's not the first time I heard it, but there's a, there's a bunch of studies that talk about creatine and, and brain health. So it's really interesting to hear about, you know, the HMOs and almost, you know, they've been around for years, obviously in um, breast milk, but I guess um, really only been supplementing, as you said, looks like 2014 in the in the formulas. And now, how long has it been available for adults? Who was were, were you guys the first company that started putting this into an adult formula, or somebody else? No, we weren't. There's a, a Dutch company um, owned by uh, I think it's Glycom and DSM. It's called, um, and they were the first to market, I believe, or one of the first to market with yeah. this um, a couple of years ago, actually, um, with with HMOs in a powder, like what are those called, sachets, like the little mm -hmm. packets for, um, or I don't know how to pronounce that, um, for uh, for adults. Um, and they have, uh, yeah, so they they were pretty much one of the first with that uh, over in Europe. Hmm. And, you know, we might be the first in the US. I'm not 100% sure. I don't yeah. want to make a false claim, but sure. we're one of the first, if not the first in the US. Um, we started selling our HMO in the spring, actually. So, uh, you know, we, we, started, we started selling our products for the first time publicly um, in, uh, during the pandemic, you know, right when the <laughs> pandemic was, was starting. So uh, February, February was wow. like, all right, let's launch. Let's launch a, a nutrition <laughs> brand. And, uh, oh, wait, there's a, there's a global pandemic. Yeah. So, uh, but as you know, I mean, it's actually behooved certain sectors, right. And certain mm -hmm. brands, uh, you know, whether you're zoom or DocuSign or, you right. know, so it, it wasn't horrible. I mean, we, we saw a lot of growth in, in the first year and, um, it had its ups and downs and we've had some inventory issues. You know, we were mentioned on the, as I alluded to the, uh, the Ben Greenfield mm -hmm. fitness podcast and saw sales explode. That was in July. And uh, probably one of the biggest, you know, that was an interview he did with uh, Joel Green, who uh, basically wrote a book called The Immunity Code. Um, and so Joel Green might be the, the world's biggest proponent of uh, HMOs. Uh -huh. I mean, he is like, he's all over it. He says that it's, uh, you know, that they're, they're kind of the greatest thing in the world. And, um, you know, certainly an evangelist for them. And he sure. recommends taking them, you know, he's also big into like apple, uh, you know, phenols and, and red apple, you know, red powder and, and um, apple peels and, and things of that nature for his gut health protocol. But right. uh, 
Yeah, we certainly rid, rode that wave of, of, you know, the mention on, on that podcast and, and certainly have driven a lot of interest. And, and now we're kind of struggling to just produce enough. Well, I mean, that's not a bad problem to have for you guys, right? <laughs> yeah, a- yeah, it's, I, you know, it, it, yeah, it's not, um, yeah, it's always just frustrating as a, you know, organization when, you know, people are clamoring for something right. and, and you just, you can't deliver it, you know, and right. so we're, we are struggling with that, but we're, we're actually building our own facility here in Ithaca in, in March and, and uh, should be up and running. And so that's, that's a very exciting thing to, to try to be able to produce more and, and it'll be NSF certified and everything. And so. Oh, nice. Yeah. So in, NSF, excited. it's just that, you know, basically third party organization that's checking all supplements. And uh, I would say that if something is NSF certified, they're putting the money into it because you get, you guys got to pay for that. And so um, any supplement that you look at, if it's NSF certified, you're pretty much guaranteed that the purity and the ingredients uh, are on point. And then you, the uh, IOC is good with NSF and all sports organizations. So especially if you're an athlete or you got a kid doing that and you see all these the times that the athletes like, Oh, I took a supplement. I didn't know this testosterone was in there. Yeah. You probably knew like you weren't, you weren't taking the supplement. Um, but <laughs> it, like there was probably something else you were taking. Uh, but yeah, NSF certified. I mean, that's, um, it's nice that you guys actually, you know, uh, did your due diligence and, and got certified with that. All right. So how should people take this? It's just kind of like a once a day thing. Should they pop it in a smoothie? Like I do, what's, what's your preference? Yeah. So there's, you know, we have three options. Um, we have a kind of the OG was our, our first capsule version called pure HMO. Um, it has 1300 milligrams in two capsules. We recommend that people start with two capsules. You can take them with or without food. It doesn't really make a huge difference. Um, and then we, we recommend that you work up to three of those capsules. So you're, we want people to be in the 2000 milligram range uh, per day. So that was, that was our original product. Um, then we came out with the powder. It's the same exact uh, contents that's in the capsules, but um, our chief scientist, Jason, says it has faster absorption uh, with the powder. That's what you uh, were sent, you know, that you're, right. you've been taking. Um, we don't, you know, we don't have a company line in terms of how we advise people taking it. I mean, right. it is a powder, so you could theoretically like scoop it into your mouth. I, I don't know anyone who's really going to do that. It doesn't um, taste. It's I have like, seen people. Yeah, it's ta- it's tasteless. So I mean, you could do it. Just a little chalky. Right. Exactly. You know, it's a sugar, but it doesn't really taste sweet. Um, so the probably the best way is the way Joel Green recommends, which is have it with. A shake and so what we found is people are taking it with their you know whey isolate or their plant protein um in a shake and um it is stable i mean you could have it with hot coffee if you desired to do that we had a customer ask about that recently and gave him some clarification on that um you know there isn't really we don't have a protocol for it you know like you want to have three kiwis first and then drink a glass of water and then have the shake <laughs> sure. um joel green Joel Green does have a very specific protocol of, you know, you have these, uh, you, you take a red apple and you peel off the skin and then you eat that and you, or you mix that in with your shake, um, and some phenol powder and, you know, red phenols and with the HMO. But, um, you know, so if you subscribe to him, then you'll do that otherwise, but we say that you don't really need to do that. You can just, you know, have it with almost anything. I mean, it's, you know, water soluble, basically. So you can have it with any liquid. And then the third option is our newest product, which is a combo product. It's called HMO prebiotic plus probiotic. And it's also a capsule, but it does have a um, hundred billion CFU, uh, 10 strain probiotic uh, combined with a thousand milligrams of the HMO prebiotic. And so you would need to take, you know, basically uh enough to get 2000 milligrams of the, of the prebiotic. And so again, it goes back to your question though, of like who needs to take this. And so how would you know, you know, which there's obviously overlap and redundancy within these three uh, products. So I think, you know, it comes down to basically an evaluation of your diet. I mean, you'd have to look at your nutritional profile. Are you getting probiotics? Do you, do you take another probiotic supplement already? If you do, if you have one that you love, then maybe you should just try our prebiotic only. Mm. But if you've never had a probiotic before, if you're not, you know, if you're too lazy to eat kimchi and, you know, get a, get a big probiotic source in your diet, then maybe you would want to take the combo product is kind okay. of what we say. Yeah. Kimchi is not for me. And I didn't mean to rhyme. I am not a poet. I did not know it. <laughs> uh, I, I just, man, sometimes I go off on those tangents. Uh, all right. So I got a couple more, oh, good, que- good a couple more questions for you. Yeah. Never take, take myself too seriously. Um, all right. So. 
Well, you have a discount code. I, I, don't, I want to make sure that um, people get that. What's your discount code for people? Anybody listening? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Um, the discount code for your listeners is uh, 20 future pod um, okay. is what we came up with. Uh, that works. So uh, it's two zero, like, you know, the numbers uh, two zero and then future pod P O D. And that's uh, they can use that on amazon.com slash layer origin or at layer origin.com. Perfect. Okay. Last question. HMOs not sucking on grown women's teats don't do that you're gonna get in trouble unless it's unless it's your wife or something see i got it in one more time i got it one more one more time i knew okay. it was gonna come back <laughs> <laughs> i had to wrap it up i started with it my wife's gonna listen to this podcast She's like what the hell is wrong with you uh i don't know <laughs> you, you married me so it's been almost 13 years okay uh eight okay. hmos fatter future and why uh, we, we argue that HMOs are the future. Um, we just have seen the immense gut health benefits and immune health benefits. You know, we're in a pandemic, people are gobbling lots of vitamin D and looking for any way to boost their immune system. This is a very natural way to do it scientifically based on what's in breast milk and what nurtures the infant immune system and the infant gut lining. Um, if you, you know, I, I have something that I kind of personally call the PubMed test. And if I, can go to PubMed, you know, what is it, .org and, and yep. search something. And if there's, you know, at least 10 articles uh, or research studies on its efficacy, I'm going to buy into it. If there's not, like my dad at one point said something about like thieves spray. And I was like, dad, is this anything? Like, is there any research? Oh, no, they used to use it 200 years ago. I said, okay, <laughs> all right, whatever. You can keep <laughs> taking that. But <laughs> so, you know, I'm always looking for research, right, into sure. things. And so, our, there's a multitude of research into this, you know, both in Europe and the US. And uh, that's why we think it's the future. It reminds us of, reminds me of probiotics about 15 to 20 years ago, where you would kind of peripherally hear people talk about probiotics, this probiotics, that maybe you didn't know what it meant. It's kind of like postbiotics. Now you hear mm -hmm. that term and a lot of people are like, what? Right. Um, and we think HMOs are kind of the next probiotics, even though they are a prebiotic, but mm -hmm. Uh, something that you hear a lot on the periphery, you're going to start hearing about it. Um, and before you know it, maybe five years from now, maybe two years from now, it starts popping up in, you know, the CVS, the Walgreens, the Rite Aid on your corner, just like you have now with a line, you know, in the major um, probiotic brands, Culturel, right. et cetera. So that's our theory. Um, we'll see if it comes true, but we do think that it's uh, the future uh, and not a fad. All right. Where can people find you? Uh, Amazon, your website, anywhere else? Yeah, I appreciate you asking that. Uh, Amazon.com slash layer origin. We sell on Amazon, you know, for the prime members um, who love that fast shipping. We also have it on our website with free shipping, uh, layerorigin.com. And if anyone's hearing this and they're like, how the hell do you spell that? It's just L-A-Y-E-R and then the word origin.com. Uh, we're also all over social media, um, even LinkedIn uh, we're on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so LinkedIn, um, YouTube, uh, Instagram, and uh, Facebook. So we're on all of it. And uh, yeah. Amazing. Bo, B-E-A-U. That's a joke we had beforehand. Uh, <laughs> Bo Berman, thanks for, thanks for coming on. This is Joey Thurman. There's another episode of the Fad or Future podcast. Remember, don't be a fatty. F-A-D-D-Y. Be a part of the future. Cheers.